Hello again. Now we're going to look at using the law of cosines to solve for an angle. Now when we talked about using the law of sines to solve for an angle, there are some special cases and things we have to look out for. Law of cosines, we don't have to worry about that. That's why I'd rather you use the law of cosines, if at all possible, when solving for an unknown angle. The reason being, you, the calculator will give you the one angle you need, and that's it. You don't have to worry about anything else. So, if we look at the info packet and get on the front page, in order to use the law of cosines to solve for an angle, you have to be given all three sides. Or side, side, side. Now, if you're looking for angle A, you're going to inverse cosine what we have here in parentheses. And as we work through these, and I gave you, again, all three variations that I'll read down for you, I want you to do what's inside here first. The last thing you're going to worry about is taking the inverse cosine of it. So if you're looking for angle A, our numerator is B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. If you're looking for angle B, our numerator is A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC is our denominator. And if you're looking for angle C, it's A squared plus B squared minus C squared is our numerator, all over 2AB is our denominator. So, when working with these, especially when typing them in the calculator, I want you to put your numerator in its own set of parentheses divided by the denominator in its own set of parentheses. You'll get a decimal eventually. Once you get that decimal, then we'll hit second cosine of that decimal to get the angle. Let me show you what I mean. If we look at the example, it's the last one on the info packet here for law of cosines. It'll give you a triangle with three sides given. Basically, side A is 22.4 kilometers, side B is 45.2 kilometers, and side C is 31.6 kilometers. And I worked out the problem here for you, but I'm going to show you how to use the law of cosines to solve for the first angle. Now, say we want to solve for angle A. I just chose that one at random. Now, we want to naturally use the law of cosines set for angle A, which is B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So we plug in our values, 45.2 squared plus 31.6 squared minus 22.4 squared, all over 2 times 45.2 times 31.6. And now I broke this into steps to show you something here. Again, when you're entering it in your calculator, put open parenthesis, that whole numerator, close it, you should end up with 2539.84. For your denominator, open parenthesis, 2 times 45.2 times 31.6 close it, you should end up with 2856.64 and change. Divide those two numbers, you end up with 0 0.8891. Just like law of signs, whatever this decimal is, it should always be between negative one and positive one. So you can have a negative decimal, as long as it's greater than negative one, but less than positive one. Inverse cosine that, you end up with 27.24 degrees. And now that we have angle A, we have options. We could, now that we have a matched pair, use law of sines, but again, we're solving for an angle, whether it be angle B or C. I'd rather use law of cosines, because again, you can end up with a special case using law of sines for an angle. For a side, you're fine using law of sines, but for an angle, you can have special cases. I'd rather use law of cosines. Now, I want you to work it out, and on the info packet, it's there step by step for you. Once you get the second angle, just take the sum of those two from 180, and that'll give you the third angle. But, Keep in mind, but most important thing, don't worry about the inverse cosine until the very last step. Do all the math inside the parentheses first. It should funnel down to a decimal. Inverse cosine that decimal, that'll give you the angle. And that's how you use law of cosines to solve for an angle.